Now, before we get into the theories of the rise of Skywalker, I want to give a tip of the hat to Cam Sharp, whose poster I used a piece of in the thumbnail of this video. As you can see by the comment that he's posted here on his Instagram, oh my God, this is amazing, looks about right. Maybe they should let you make the poster. At the end of the theories, I'm also going to show you some poster work he's done for the previous Disney Star Wars movies, which is Solo and Rogue One. And so I know Solo gives a lot of people a bad taste in their mouth, and certainly The Last Jedi does as well. But that's not to distract or detract away from his poster work. Anyway, let's get into the theories. I'm going to read out these 11 theories that are in Esquire, plus a few others. And I think we end up with about 14 or 15. Okay, let's first cab off the rank here. I'll scroll down. Luke has been chatting with his father, Anakin, for decades. That knowledge, the most important bit of information is how Luke learned the ability to become a Force ghost after death. As Luke writes in the book, and this was a book called The Secrets of the Jedi, that knowledge was passed down to a select few, including Obi-Wan, Yoda, and my father. Their spirits guided me for many years, but vanished when I shut myself off from the Force. It's a relief to feel their presence after all this time. Now, of course, my, my immediate question with something like that is, why can they not speak to you if you've shut off from the Force? If they are independent ghosts who can materialize at will, they shouldn't need you to be connected to the Force for them to materialize in front of you. They should just be able to materialize and just materialize. Uh, the only explanation why they can't connect with you if you've shut off from the Force, is that they're not actually materialising, but just planting visions in your head that they are there. But of course, if that's the case, then Yoda does not create lightning to come down and strike a tree. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. Okay. So it would also mean that Darth Vader most probably told Luke about all of the plans that Palpatine had in place and so on and so forth, contingency plans, plans that what should happen if he dies and so on and Luke would have then been able to proactively make all those plans stop plans such as how the first order would create would create after his death and so on and so forth Luke would be able to prevent all of that you would have to assume if he'd been able to talk with Darth Vader and his father Luke was actually dead the whole time is the second theory he was killed when Kylo Ren attacked the Jedi Academy a decade ago Luke didn't know how to turn into a ghost like Yoda and Obi-Wan did never learnt that trick so he was lost in some magical force plane of existence and couldn't really materialize before people. That's why he couldn't save Han, he couldn't kill Snoke, etc. He could only protect, project visions into people's minds in one particular place in the galaxy that is strong with the force. So we're saying Ray on this island having visions about Luke and Luke struggling to materialize himself as a force ghost. He's not really there. We're seeing everything from Ray's point of view, only visions of Luke. This is why we don't see Luke talking of Chewie, because Ray can't see him. R2 was the closest sentient being to Luke when he died a decade before, so some part of Luke was in R2, which is why R2 was broken in Force Awakens. Luke Skywalker is not some asshole that doesn't care about his friends. He's a confused ghost that's disconnected from the universe of the living. Then once he's able to figure out how to project his ghost to the world of the living, he immediately goes and saves everyone. Of course, a couple of big problems with that is we do see Rey sitting on a rock. Now with her eyes closed, if Luke can only project into his into her mind, why would he be smacking her on the hand with a little piece of twig when she's reaching out to feel the force and so on? Why would he be able to close the steel door on his little hut that had a visual and a sound attached to it? So are we to assume that he created a fake vision in Ray's mind of an open door closing together with a sound as well? That's a a lot of things to be asking and if he had died all that time ago then why would there be a map to an island where he's a ghost to right so too many plot holes in that one okay so moving on actually Kylo Ren is good he could have made a conscious decision to join the dark side to save something and Palpatine whatever but still have numerous emotional issues and trauma dealing with perceived betrayal from his family and abandonment issues as well as his belief that his role is to be the monster everyone thinks he is. I had dismissed the double agent theory before, but now I see that I was viewing it too simplistically. It's not an either-or thing. Kylo could have very well believed he was doing something right, but that also means he 
would have to become the monster everyone considers him to be, and with his fear issues, becoming that monster was not too difficult. Now this is one that does have a tad of plausibility in it, because when he's talking to Vader's helmet, assuming Snoke is not putting these thoughts into his head, he is saying he will finish what Vader started. Now if that is to finally end the evil or the Sith or whatever, then you could assume that he is therefore doing it from a perspective where what he thinks he's doing is right. So there is a, a tad of plausibility in that, but there's a tad of plausibility that the Emperor was actually trying to protect the universe as well and was doing the right thing. But we're not going to get into that because this is the last, the Rise of Skywalker. Palpatine had a contingency plan in place for after he died. Prior to his demise, he created the contingency to destroy the Empire in the event of his death, believing that the Empire did not deserve to survive without its Emperor. As a consequence, the Imperial remnants were further weakened and less able to resist the New Republic during the waning days of the Galactic Civil War. Ultimately, the Empire capitulated the war after the Battle of Jakku in 5 ABY, ending the era founded by Darth Sidious. Following his death, Sidious's legacy became the base of what became the First Order, an Hermit state led by Supreme Leader Snoke, who was also a practitioner of the Dark Side of the Force. The reign of Snoke would ultimately end with his death at the hands of his own apprentice and Skywalker's grandson Kylo Ren, who succeeded his master as the new Supreme Leader, desiring to let the past die along, I guess, along with the Jedi and the Sith. Okay, yeah, not totally 100% sure on that one. There's not much of a contingency plan in place. Uh, see, if you go in with the first thing that Luke was conveying, convening with Obi-Wan and Yoda and Darth Vader, then they certainly would have all known about some contingency plan and helped Luke to stop it in the first place. Uh, with Leia's position high up, any contingency plans would have been dealt with by the New Republic. First Order generally wouldn't have been allowed to rise in the first place as it did. So I'm seeing there's a few little holes in this theory as well. Okay, so we move on. Ray will turn bad. She has a Darth moniker and was turned to the dark side after being tortured. Sidious informs him that the Skywalker lineage was a mistake because it was corrupted with weak light side midi chlorians and that Ray was his latest experiment. Ray was created by Sidious as a new force being as Anakin failed, and that explained her powers, as she was a new Anakin. In Sidious's opinion, the Skywalker family was a mistake which needed to be eradicated. Now, wielding a double-bladed lightsaber, fight Kylo. Kylo will toss the Red Cross Guard for Anakin's lightsaber and fights Rey in the Star Destroyer. My only problem with this, that is, creating Rey and then leaving her free in the world, is that you are risking massive, ch even if you leave her on a desert planet, you're risking that some Prince Charming guy will come and sweep her off her feet and she'll fall in love and get pregnant and have lots of little babies. At which point, she's probably not really going to be turning to the dark side anytime soon. So that's a very big risk to be placing. That by apparently creating her as a dark force thing. Okay, Ray is some sort of clone. Uh, now, yes, there are precedents of clones in the Star Wars universe. We don't need to cover that. So there are various vision versions of this theory out there. Some of them say Rey is a clone created in a lab as a copy of either Darth Vader or the Emperor as part of Palpatine's contingency plan. Others say Rey is a clone of Leia, considering the bond we've seen between the two of them in Episode 7 and 8. Some say she's a clone made from Luke Skywalker's severed hand. Well, straight off the bat, she can't be a clone of Vader, Palpatine or Luke, because then she'd have to be male. So the only plausible thing is that she'd be a clone of Leia, in which case she'd have to look like Princess Leia, and she doesn't look like either of them. So I'm not saying she can't be a clone, and I'm not saying she can't be created, but she can't be a clone of an existing character, because otherwise she'd have to look like that character, unless she was originally taken from that character's DNA and then modified so that she'd look a little bit different. But then she's not a clone. Okay, so we're moving on from that one. Ray's parents weren't really drunk losers. Okay, so Kylo said they were just junk deal dealers who tra or traders who sold her for drinking money. And of course, everyone's just buying that, including Ray. No one's questioning this at all. And yet, if we are led to believe that Kylo Ren has adopted the dark side, 
fully, then we have to go by Yoda's words that when Dooku revealed to that he was now a baddie, that Yoda's words were that Dooku was on the dark side, lies, deceit, um, and mistrust are his ways now. So you have to assume if Kylo was on the dark side, then lies, deceit, and mistrust are his ways now. So anything he says about who her parents were must be lies, deceit, and mistrust. Automatically, it should go without saying he's not telling the truth. So end of story there about the truth. But of course, what other theories of who her parents are if they're not random drunks. So here we've got some theories at the bottom. Granddaughter of Obi-Wan, a descendant of Palpatine. Another one says she's the daughter of Han Solo, which led to his estrangement from Leia. Well, there's also a theory floating around out there that she is the actual daughter of Han and Leia and that they were split up at birth in some tragic splitting up thing that possibly happened or maybe even something that Leia wanted to happen so that just like her and Luke were split up that their two children would be split up at just in case something like that in which case we're just duplicating what happened in the previous story. Ray is Palpatine's daughter. Now this one is kind of brilliant and it's just based on this little move here and that is that she Palpatine has taught Ray some stuff and Ray actually knows that she's the daughter. So we've got this little lightsaber move coming from Sheev that is the holding back and the thrusting move. And then apparently Ray, who has never been trained by anyone, does the exact same move. So there we go. So that's all the proof for that theory. Rightly or wrongly, hey, it fits at least in that little bit. Of course, if that's a reveal, then... Assuming Ray knows, if Ray doesn't know, then all we're doing is we're copying Darth Vader telling Luke that he's a father, then Palpatine saying to Ray, I'm your father. And we're just going back to just duplicating what the original movies have done, and we're not really, we haven't done anything new. The Skywalkers are a completely new kind of religion. The last movie was The Last Jedi. What if they were telling us the title? The way Jedi has been used historically in these movies, including the last movie, The Last Jedi, The Jedi's Must End, all that stuff. What if it that's it for the Jedi's and perhaps a new religion are the Skywalkers. Didn't that just give you chills? What if that what if it's that? Wouldn't that be dope? Like Luke was so important, like I'm gonna cry to the universe that from then on they named the order after him. They're all Skywalkers. Well that's uh kind of like I don't see that they would name the new order after him, considering that he might be their inspiration, but he's certainly not what started. So at which point we might as well go back to that the book that Luke is writing. So that the Scott, the uh, the Jedi saga book that apparently he's writing, where he wrote down about communing with Anakin and whatever. He's you know like Luke's on an island or whatever, writing a book so he can sell it, sell it as a Kindle on Amazon or something like that. Okay, so Kylo Ren is possessed by Darth Plagueis or Plagueis, which was the interesting. Ever notice his name, Darth Plagueis or Plagueis? Plague, as in an infectious disease. Darth Plagueis unlocked the secrets to immortality by moving from one body to the next, continuing his lifespan through multiple hosts over countless years. Ever wondered why Palpatine was so obsessed with training a powerful young apprentice? Surely he knew that one day the apprentice would want to overthrow him, so why train his own murderer? In Return of the Jedi, Emperor Palpatine continually provokes Luke to strike him down. Why would Palpatine want to be killed if the goal is longevity? Because Emperor Palpatine was assumed by Darth Plagueis, and through his death he would then be able to transmit himself into a new host body. He wasn't just looking for an apprentice, he was looking for a new body since Palpatine's body was growing old. Luke Skywalker was meant to be the next host body for Darth Plagueis, but unfortunately for Plagueis, Darth Vader had a change of heart and defeated the Emperor. Now this one I kind of like a lot. Reason being is uh, in one of the books about Palpatine killing Darth Plagueis. The idea was that obviously he got him drunk first because otherwise he probably would have put an end to it. And I think that initially he was kind of like a little bit resistant to what Palpatine was doing, but then kind of just let it happen, so to speak, as if that 
during this increased rage that Palpatine was going to be using to kill him, at that moment he could transfer or possibly even swap essences right at that peak moment, at which point, just as he's dying, the essences swap and he enters Palpatine's body as Palpatine enters the dying body. That's a possibility, unless the other possibility is that Palpatine is still within that body and being suppressed, or even possibly doesn't even know that Plagueis has entered him and is manipulating him the whole time. So both of those, all those sorts of things work for me. Makes a lot of sense. And he can keep training new apprentices, encouraging them to kill him and transfer his essence into their body and keep on living. Matt Smith will be playing a young Palpatine. Doctor Who star Matt Smith will be appearing in the upcoming Star Wars film, but it's not clear exactly who the actor will be playing. Inverse reported back in November 18 that all arrows are pointing directly to a young Emperor Palpatine. Now, of course, the question would be why is that? Why would he be playing Palpatine? Well, possibly to show Palpatine's beginnings, possibly to show Palpatine killing his master. That's one possible reason you would have a young Matt Smith, or a, a Matt Smith playing a young Palpatine. So moving on from those, I don't think that no, there are no other theories. So we have a couple of other ones. Yes, we've had the idea that Obi-Wan or Luke or something like that is Ray's father or grandfather or something like that. Now, uh, you've probably also heard of time traveling Ray. The idea being that at some point in time in this movie, Ray will travel back in time and might even become the daughter or the mother of Anakin, which is she's Rey now, but in a previous time she was Shmi Skywalker. You know, uh, which would exp how she gets pregnant mystery because apparently Shmi doesn't know, and in which case we're talking about a closed time loop sort of thing. So there's uh, there's that one. Now there's another one where you hear Luke talking about. The thousand generations of Jedi reside in you now. Now, there are two things that come out of uh, one of the leaks on Reddit. One is that Kylo Ren gets killed. Now, seeing as this is the rise of Skywalker, Kylo Ren Ben Solo is actually also Ben Skywalker if you're going to take Leia's original name. That is, Leia's name, well, Leia is a Skywalker. In which point, Ben technically also is a Skywalker, has that Skywalker blood in him. Now, if he dies in the process and he is resurrected again, that is all the Force ghosts of the Jedi pour all their energy into him to bring him back to life because he finally ended the rule of Darth Plagueis and the Sith and, and whatever, and he finally brought an end and a balance to the Force then that would justify Luke saying a thousand generations now reside in you because they've all used their thousand generations of force ghost energies to bring him back to life. So that's that's uh, one theory based on what Luke says in The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, now the other one that came out of a leak is that Rey is Palpatine's granddaughter. So now we've got Darth Vader talking to Luke. Empire Strikes Back, I'm your father. In this case, it's Palpatine talking to Rey. I'm your grandfather, so come and rule the galaxy alongside me. We heard those words before. Anakin trying to tell Amidala, Padme, that way they can rule his empire together. And of course, yeah, one of the other things that has come out is that Palpatine is a Raylo shipper. That is, he wants Ray and Kylo to be a couple and rule the galaxy together. It's <laughs> oh my God! It's turning this a, still a better story, <laughs> still a better Twilight, still a better love story than Twilight, right? <laughs> anyway, my favourite one, which they don't cover, and just talking about Ray, is that Ray is a Sith spy. And she's always been a Sith spy. She's been a Sith from the very beginning. And she was placed on Jakku specifically as a Sith spy because 
she knew the Millennium Falcon was there. And at some point in time, someone would come and gather the Millennium Falcon. They'd come to claim it. There'd be some link in that way. And then she could somehow get into the resistance and so on, which would explain why she's great with a staff. She knows how to fight. She didn't just learn how to fight from a little girl. Someone had to show her how to fight. Why her staff appears to have a double-bladed lightsaber at the end of the staff because she does have a double-bladed lightsaber and she knew how to use a double-bladed lightsaber. And when she walks into the throw room, then the Snoke says, ah, my young apprentice, why would he be having that reaction to Kylo Ren? It's more as if to say he's actually talking to Ray at that point. Anyway, there's a great video that covers all of Ray being a Sith. I'll put that in the description below. Okay, so they are all the theories. Now let's have a look at some other artwork that Cam Sharp has done here for the posters. So on the left, you can see the Force Awakens poster, and on the right, you have the Last Jedi poster. Both of those, to me, are far better than anything that Disney has popped out. Then on the left, you've got Solo. On the right, you've got Rogue One. I like both of those posters a little bit better as well. They hearken more to the old-fashioned, old-school type of posters that look like paintings, some way, shape, or form. And so what I'll do also in the description below, you'll have a link to Cam's website and a link to his Instagram as well. So these are the current two posters that he's done for Rise of Skywalker. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Which theory do you like the best out of the 14 or 15 theories that have been presented here? Personally, I like the idea that Ray is a Sith. I also like that Plagius is not dead and has actually transferred his essence from body to body. How he escapes out of Palpatine's body or how Palpatine is still alive at the end if Palpatine is alive and hasn't just been transferred into Matt Smith, instead of Matt Smith not playing a young Palpatine, but actually playing Palpatine now as someone who's had the, the essence transferred into, or at least Plagius at this point, or something, some way, shape, or form like that. Uh, I like both of those theories more than anything. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Share the video if you can, and until next time, thanks for watching.